Welcome to the channel. This is King of Quant. Today we're going to be looking at a Tableau dashboard and how you can use it to run NBA simulations between two hypothetical teams. So let's go ahead and jump right into the dashboard. As you can see, we've got a home team coded in blue and an away team coded in red. Um, on the home team, we can see we have point guard Kyrie Irving. Um, we're going to go ahead and swap him out for a different point guard, um, probably Rondo, just for an example. But one thing to notice before we do that is to check both the expected home score and the expected away score. And right now, the home team would hypothetically be beating the away team. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we swap out our point guards. We're going to get rid of Kyrie Irving. And as you can see, it updates automatically on the dashboard to remove him from the point guard spot. And we'll throw in Rajon Rondo. And as you can see, it puts him in the point guard spot automatically. Um, the next thing to notice is that the home score has changed um, definitely downward. Um, and as any casual NBA fan would know, while Rondo was great at one point in time, he's not quite in his prime anymore. So the score did drop a little bit. Next, we're going to look at how each one of these sheets uh, is composing this one fully functioning, fully interactive dashboard. So we'll switch over to the home court. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just the left side of our dashboard um, of a full NBA court. Same thing on the away side. It's just the opposite thing. Um, the home score is just a bar graph. Same thing with the away score. And as we can see, we're not trying to build a final product necessarily as much as we're just building this really awesome foundation that we can build on in the future. So next up, I'm going to split screen what we've already completed and then walk you guys through how to create this dashboard on the other side. So first things first, we're going to download our data from basketballreference.com. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a Google Drive link in the comment section with all the files that you would need to recreate this dashboard. So I'm going to load up an Excel file here um, plop that in and let's take a quick look at the data. We can see we've just got really standard, um, seasonal statistics for each and every player. Um, really what we're going to be focusing on is total rebounds, points, and then, um, assists right here. So let's pop open our first sheet and get an idea of how to set this unique background for a Tableau worksheet. What you'll wanna do is go online first and find a picture that you want and split it right at the half court line or whatever sport it is, split it right down the middle. We're gonna go up to the map tab on the toolbar and choose background images and then pick our first sheet. We want to add an image and uh, first we're actually gonna go ahead and create two calculated fields. What we need in order to add a background image is X and Y coordinates. It is very standard, just as if you were to create a map of the world or the United States, you need X and Y coordinates, latitude and longitude. So let's label this X coordinates. And what we wanna do is just leave it empty at first um, and we're just going to put null in there so it's going to give tableau some fake values to go ahead and construct our our um, image off of you want to switch this to a number decimal and then drag it down to the measures section of tableau and then just go ahead and duplicate this tab and rename it um, y coordinates And now we're good to go. So pop open that map tab again and go to sheet one, add an image, and then let's name this left court and go find your file. And just like how I was saying, you guys can see I found one image online. I went ahead and split it up into two different sides right at the half court line. So we're gonna grab our left image, switch our X to x coordinate and our y to y coordinate. 
Now it gets a little bit trickier, but really it's, it's pretty straightforward. Find that file on your desktop, and you can do this with Windows or Mac. Um, right click on it, hit the properties, and then go over to details. And you're gonna be looking for the dimensions. 285 by 344. And right here, X is going to be 285, Y is going to be 344. Hit OK, hit OK, and now we drag our X onto the columns and our Y onto the rows, and boom. Now we have our image. So what will happen if we don't adjust for this now is when we put certain players on here, the image will resize. And we don't want that. We want it to stay standard half court. So we're going to go ahead and edit the axis to be fixed 344. You guessed it. And same thing over here on the X coordinates. We're going to edit it to be fixed 0 to 285. And, and we're good to go. OK. So we're going to go ahead and hide these headers because we don't need them. We, we just want a standard picture. Get rid of the title. Let's name this sheet left, or we'll call it home court, because this is going to be our home team on this side. And then what we want to do is create another calculated field. And I'm going to call this player plus POS for position. And it's this is really simple, just basic coding plus um, player plus open up some quotations, put in a comma and then a space and then close your quotations. And it's just for formatting purposes. Nothing crazy going on here. And then we're going to add on the POS for the position after that. And it's just for clarity so that people can easily see what position the player is. Um, because this dashboard is going to be position restricted. Point guards can only go at the top of the key, uh, shooting guard at the right wing, small forward at the left wing, power forward on the right short corner, uh, center on the left short corner. So you can't really have overlapping positions. You can't have two centers on the court at the same time, just one player for each position. But that can be changed. Right now we're just focusing on the fundamentals of creating this kind of dashboard. So hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and filter by player and position. Hit all for right now and then hit OK. We're going to go ahead and show this filter. And I always drag it over to the other side so it's a little bit easier to use and format it as a multiple value custom list. That's just going to make it a little bit easier to find your players rather than having a list of however many 500 plus players. So the next step is to figure out how we're going to get these players' names onto the court because it's not as easy as just a standard Tableau map where it's bounded by county lines or state lines or whatever it might be. So what you do for that is just right-click whatever point you want to put a player's name at and just hit annotate and then hit point. It's going to show you your coordinates because that is what we're calculating our columns and rows on. And boom, now we have exactly where we're going to put the name. And you're going to do that for each and every spot. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do that for every spot because um, it is a little bit of a lengthy process. And I do already have those um, calculated up in the other workbook. So I'm going to go over to, my, uh, to the home team over here pull up my X coordinate calculation. It's really simple. Um, I'm just gonna copy it and bring it over and then I'll walk through it with everybody so that you can see exactly what's being calculated. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and annotate this point again just so you can get an idea. Um, and then this one too for shooting guards. So what's happening is um, let me pull up the, the X coordinate for this worksheet and paste it in there. Okay, so what's happening is looking at our X coordinates, this 
um, this calculation, which is just editing what we already created, but we put null in there for, um, is just assigning x coordinates to different positions. Point guards have an x coordinate of 220. And as we can see, we're really close to 220. I probably tweaked it just a little bit um, in the other dashboard, but if we uh, remove this one, and maybe if we come out to right here, we're gonna get really close to 220. Um, yeah, two to see, or somewhere in between there. Um, same thing with shooting guards or 170, probably right in here somewhere rather than right here at this very specific point, um, and so on. So really simple. All we're doing is we're just doing, instead of a bunch of nested if statements, we're just doing a case statement. Um, it's much more efficient because you can just assign values based on if scenarios rather than if, else, else ifs, and a bunch of other stuff. So hit OK. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll leave those up for a second. Once again, we need the same kind of formula for our Y coordinates. I've already got those calculated, so I'm going to go over here and copy those from my other workbook and then just bring them on over. Um, and I did not want to do that. There we go. Uh, edit. And I'm just going to paste in the stuff from the other one. And we'll go over it real quick again. Point guard 175. Right here we're at 178. Um, shooting guard 282. Right here 297. So you can see where I'm getting these coordinates from. Really, you just need a rough idea. And then you can tweak a few pixels here and there based on whatever you need for formatting. And we'll hit OK. So now we want to get rid of these annotated points uh, because you just need those temporarily. Now we'll go ahead and take our players and put them into the detail. And what's happening now is all kinds of players and positions are being added up. Um, and this is where our filter comes into play. So we'll go ahead and pick, uh, pick a point guard. Um, and we'll add Kyrie Irving in there. And boom, now we only have one player. Look, it plops the point right there. Um, we'll do the same thing with a uh, with a center. I'm not going to add all the players in here because it's not that hard of a, of a idea to grasp. So we have our point guard and our center exactly where they're supposed to be. Now, we don't really get much information from just the circles. So we're going to go ahead and switch that over, switch the entire map over, uh, the entire visualization over to a map and it gets rid of these little tiny points um, switches it from a shape chart to a map chart and we're going to change the color to completely opaque completely see-through um, really because you don't need to see the dots then we're going to take the player uh, dimension and put that on label and now we can see players names so that's really cool um, what we don't really want to see in the tooltip is X coordinates and Y coordinates because they are not providing much information that's very necessary. So, um, what I like to do then is just put the player and then the, um, go ahead and get rid of player, uh, or get rid of the player text, but keep the player identifier. And then I'm going to take the player plus position and put that in the tooltip and insert uh, attribute player plus position and then just get rid of the old attribute because uh, we don't really need that. Now, if we hover over it, we can see Kyrie Irving point guard, Joel Embiid center. So that's really nice and informative. Now we'll go to our label and change the text for the home team to be white. And we want to have a little bold because it is a little bit easier to see. And we'll bump the size up to 15 maybe. Yeah, 15 looks pretty good. So I think that is just about everything we need to finish this sheet up. Thanks everyone for watching part one. This is going to be a three-part series. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe down below. Don't forget to comment also on any suggestions or any future requests. And I'll see you guys in the next one.